All right, so today we are going to be traveling back in time and I am going to be duplicating an actual mid-century piece. This is what makes time travel possible. That's my Marty McFly impression. It's the best I can do. So this is an actual mid-century table base. And I'm not exactly sure when it was made, but I know that there is supposed to be two of them. The owner of this table moved and the moving company actually lost one of them. So they have asked me to duplicate this table base the best that I can. Now I don't often take jobs like this as duplicating something vintage can be pretty tricky. And when I'm building a piece, I usually, and not to sound too artsy fartsy, but I usually build pretty organically. I don't worry too much about specific dimensions. I just worry about the overall look and proportion. But I figured this would be a good challenge to get as close to the original as I possibly could. So the first thing I did was make a plywood prototype to figure out all the angles and the dimensions. And as you can see, there were quite a few angles on this piece. We have this kind of tapered triangular column. And then I also had to figure out the joint between the leg and the center column, which was pretty tricky. So once I had everything more or less worked out, I started on the real thing. And I began with the center column and I marked and cut one edge of each side piece and it required a 60 degree bevel and a pretty good taper from top to bottom. Once I had the first edge cut on each piece, I just adjusted my sled to cut the other side with the same bevel angle, but now just cutting that taper from bottom to top. Once I had everything cut, I cut in some mortises for dominoes to keep everything aligned during the glue up. And I also cut off the sharp corners on the edge of each piece so that I had a flat area for the clamps. I then was able to trim the entire column to length and that required a tricky kind of compound angle cut where I needed the blade to be angled as well as the miter gauge. Last thing to do on the center column was to round over the corners completely and I did this with my router table and I just kept taking passes until I got a smooth and consistent round corner along the entire edge. So now that the center column was pretty much finished I had to make the three feet and the hardest part about this was cutting the joint to match the center column. I not only had to get the radius correct on the inside, but I also had to match this vertical angle. So what I did was I started by cutting blanks to the finished length 
and on one end, I cut this matching angle. I then needed to drill a half inch diameter hole, which matches the round over on the center column. And I needed to drill it at the same angle as my vertical sides of the column. Now, once I had the holes drilled, I needed to cut the sides of each joint. And I did this on the table saw with the blade at 60 degrees, which matches the angle of the sides of the center column. The joints took a little bit of finessing with files and sandpaper, but they were pretty close right off the saw. And once I had each joint finished, it was just a matter of cutting the final shape on the bandsaw, sanding everything smooth, and then finishing that shape with a big three quarter inch round over. And finally, it was time to glue each leg onto the center column, which was pretty straightforward, but I did have to make these little clamping blocks to make sure I was getting good clamping pressure right down the center of each leg. Now, the last part of this whole thing was to try and stain the new table base to match the original, and that might have been the hardest part. I'm not even sure what wood the original piece was made out of, but I ended up using sapili and like a real light brown stain to get pretty close. All right, not bad. Just needs a few more coats of finish. Gotta get the hardware on there and it should be pretty much done. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Sorry I don't have any footage of it with the actual table. We'll just have to use our imagination. And of course, thank you for watching. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go find some plutonium for my DeLorean.